everyone. Welcome to my live stream. I'm just here in my studio in Arizona, just painting this um, little picture I found on Unsplash. So that's a royalty free website. And I thought they were really cute. They kind of remind me of that video game, Super Mario Brothers with those mushrooms. And they're just kind of like, I don't know, they're just really cute to look at. I see them on things in stores and whatnot. And I thought, why not? I've never tried painting one. So I thought I'll do this for my subscribers today. And I've got out uh, my paint. I've tried to label them so that you can read what color is what. Um, so I hope you can see that. And after the live stream is over, um, this video is available for replay to my Patreon members. And if you subscribe and become a member of my Instagram channel, you get access. I have at least 10 lessons on there and it's only 99 cents a month. And so, yeah, I like to go live and do these sometimes with my students. So, and then I open it up to the public so that everyone gets a chance to see. So I'm gonna start off, I over here, this got wet so you can't read it, but this is some alizarin crimson. And I mainly am using um, golden, uh, golden acrylic paint. I like them because they have a lot of pigment in them. So I kind of sketched it out beforehand because I'm painting on a flat surface. It's really hard to draw something correctly, flat, line flat. So I just use some pencil and I primed my canvas with this um, acrylic uh, basics, really inexpensive paint from Michaels. It's like $5.99 and it's actually not bad. And this color is parchment. I just thought it'd be almost the color of the stems of the mushrooms in a way. So I can almost leave that as the underpaint, just leave that um, for the base paint of the the mushroom. So I'm starting off with this like dark layer first of paint because um, I want to show off the brighter red and red is kind of like kind of tricky to show off. You have to really show, you know, the shadow really well and everything to get it to stand out. So I'm just gonna kind of put that edge in there first. And I'm using this, um, this is a, what is it, number, Two, Princeton Summit brush. And I'm just gonna get that in there. And I'm, this is a, like a Blick Studio canvas. So I do a lot of uh, oil classes. Um, I have lots and lots of oil painting videos, but I'm working really hard to build up more of a acrylic library for my students that paint in acrylic. So I'm really actually enjoying using the acrylic, not having to use the, the um, Gamsol and all that, the thinners and the, you know, the strong smell of it is kind of nice not to have that. Just gonna take a look from my view here. So I hope that everyone's having a good day wherever they are and that this little demo will inspire you to take up uh, you take out your paints and do something. Even if you paint just something real little like this, it's um I think it's a good art art is good therapy. So this canvas has some little warps in the canvas, which um, I can get out um, by just spraying. I, I'll spray the back of the painting with my little water spritzer. 
and then I'll sometimes use a, a paintbrush and get the water underneath into the corners and that if you do that if you're patient uh, these will come out it's just kind of annoying so and I'm because I'm filming uh, live on Instagram I have my phone facing the canvas so I can't really see your comments and unfortunately I really enjoy answering questions as I go so if you are uh, if you have any questions just please leave them in the comments or send me a direct message so now I'm going for this um, this is a cad red medium and actually this color I I'm using uh, inexpensive paint from Blick. So if you're wondering, some people like to know like what, what paint I'm using. This one is, um, I just grabbed because it's so inexpensive and Blick Artist Acrylic. So, and it's cad red medium. So it's um, just blocking in with that. So you can see how simple it is just to create a little bit of dimension in your art just by getting a contrast between, you know, the darker red and the lighter red. You already have some kind of interesting shape there. I'm just trying to keep it real simple for now as I block in those shapes. And um, the background is kind of like always confusing for uh, to know what to do with all the different, you know, things. But I feel like this is like I can see there's trees kind of some vertical lines here. And this is like a walkway. And then there's like just, you know, your typical you know, kind of dead leaves and everything. So I see like some purples and stuff in there. So I'm just gonna put some of that in there before I get too stuck on all the details here. Um, I wanna add some of those colors. So I'm gonna get some dioxys in violet, which I really like for, you know, landscapes and I finally got a new bottle of this liquid medium so I don't have to keep telling you what it is because my label was off the other one. So this gloss glazing liquid says it's a slow drying extender for acrylic colors but you can use it for anything. It's, it's, they package it in different formats like they package it as a varnish, they package it, they just change the label but it's all the same, it's all the same stuff. So I put a little bit of that out on my canvas and I'll mix a little bit of that in with my dioxys in violet because if you just use water it will start to damage the the paint underneath because it will break it down so because these are really similar to the color of the the mushroom stem I'm just gonna leave that for now and I'm just blocking in and I really enjoy using that that medium stuff because it kind of makes it transparent without you know it's not ruining the paint and I'm just gonna block in kind of everywhere because I'm going to cover a lot of the canvas up after with different colors and I want that purple kind of underneath. And don't worry if you paint over the stems at all because you can of course go back and paint let it dry and paint um, right over the acrylic with like a white or the same color, that, um, that parchment color, I just paint right over it again. And 
and I'll put a little bit of that in there and some more of that medium and And up here, I'm gonna just add some of that in there too. And this brush I'm using, I just got from Michaels because they're really, again, they're super inexpensive, Royal and Lanical, and it's called a wash. So if you're, if you're watching this for the first time, I do have quite a few tutorials on my Patreon channel and the link is up in my profile or you can find it on my website. And I try to add to it as often as I can. All right, so I see I I already erased some of the the little this thing here. I can't. I don't know what it is, but these they look like little dresses or little like skirts. I erased that one by accident. So what you can do if you do that is get your brush with a little bit of water on it, and I can probably lift off some of that paint. You can see how I can wet the paint with water it kind of ruins the paint but it it works to my advantage there because I, I need to lift it off a bit and I can do that with this one too just to make it look more interesting just make sure you go back and rinse the paint back out of your brush if you want to do that there Okay, so now I want to um, go back and while I'm in the early stages, I like to mess around with the background more than later because later I'm going to be kind of more stuck on the painting and I, you know, I'll, I'll, I won't want to mess it up or anything. So I'm looking at this uh, reference photo and I can see, um, whoopsies. I can see there's sort of this forest and then there's this kind of walkway and then the close up. So I'm gonna just put in some lighter shades of green and purple and stuff in there just to make it look like it's more off in the distance. So I could start by using a little uh, of that purple, but if you add white to it, um, that right away kind of will kind of make it look further away than closer. So I'll add a few little spots of lighter purple in here. get a little bit of this viridian here and I'm gonna put a few strokes of that viridian going more vertical just to kind of maybe give your imagination that sort of idea of like a forest or something in the background for now, this is kind of the idea. Okay. 
and you just sort of build up on it so you can go in later and you'll add more detail but at least it's sort of a space holder for um, for now Just there's, so there's some something going on in the background and it's not just you know all the same and then same within the foreground I'm going to get a little more Viridian and some of this quinacrinone magenta and I'm going to put some of those little strokes of that in there just to get some more warmer uh, colors in the foreground and in the background you have the cooler colors that brings this forward more to have some warmer colors and I'll kind of just make some kind of organic-y looking grass, grass looking strokes even though I'm not really into that right now. And you can always add a few um, little bits of dark in the background just to give the impression of some trees or something in there. I'll just kind of soften those up a little like that. And um, let's move this over a little so you can see it better. I know sometimes the comments block the painting, so again, it's a good reason to sign up because you can watch it without the comments later. So now I'm going to um, add a little orange and some of this cad red medium to make a cad red, basically like a cad red light. And I'm gonna put a little bit of that on where there's sort of that lighter part of the mushroom. There, kind of in the middle of it, there's sort of a, that lighter kind of orangey color. And then it goes to the real dark red up, up top. And that's just the cad red um, medium and some of the orange. And then if you want to make the cad red medium just a little darker, just get some alizarin and then you can kind of Get a darker red for to put back where it is on top it's kind of dark look they look kind of like right now like little spaceships And I'm, I have a, a really good lesson coming out this week on Patreon of the hydrangeas flowers and how to use the gel gloss mediums. I always get asked how to use these, um, these gel mediums and that's coming out this week. And that's gonna be a real good one. It's a lot of fun using that. All right, so now um, I want to add some more. Now that I've, these are here, but they're just kind of boring, and I will, I'll add the details to the, the mushrooms as well. So I'm just going to get some white and some of this transparent oxide 
red oxide color. And underneath the mushroom, there's a shadow here that's kind of coming in, really kind of has a bit of red in it. So I want to get that color, show that it's, it's picking up the color from the mushroom. So I can get a little alizarin in there. I'm just gonna drag a bit of that in. And get some more white. And to make that color, I'm gonna use a little dab of viridian in here with my red oxide. If you don't have the transparent red oxide, you could use some, um, I think it's burnt sienna. And I'm gonna get this painted in a bit more. And we need a little darker for the shadow, so I'm gonna mix more Viridian and that transparent red oxide. And now I have like a darker kind of neutral greeny gray color. You can make it add a tiny dab of that ultramarine blue to kind of gray it up a little more. And I'm gonna use that kind of for the shadow. There's a little shadow where that kind of that little looks like a little skirt on the mushroom is. I can fix the shape of them after. I'm just gonna get that shadow in there. there. So now we can go back and get a little more of that that light color and right on the edge of it there's a, a highlight there. got a lot of like little ruffles to to the edge so I'll go back with my purple and kind of reshape some of those and right here I'm just gonna do this some shadow under here or it won't show up. Sort of look at your, you know, what you're painting and always kind of, you know, make sure you've got your shadows underneath so it really pops out the and gives it dimension otherwise it looks kind of flat and that's always you know hard to do um, in the beginning 
and sometimes going back the fun thing with acrylic is you can go back and put your shadows in with like a glaze too so I'm just gonna go back and get some of the shadow now Sort of blend this up into the, the shadow that's underneath here. You can even use a little bit of your that liquid medium just to sort of make it a little more blendable. You know, if you don't like the shape of anything, you can always go back. Like I'm gonna go and kind of reshape some of the the uh, mushroom because it gets a little bit lost. Um, just getting the paint down sometimes it just goes the wrong way because you've got the canvas has its own texture. So you kind of have to. You know play with it go with go back and forth a bit with it just going back and adding a little more uh, shadow color in there okay so now that I got those parts in there a little bit more. I want to go and kind of look at the values a little. So I'm going to go and really now mix up a little more. Use this red oxide and the viridian. And I'm going to use a little bit of the white. So I'm just gonna blend a bit of that in there. My my other kind of white gray color. Maybe a little bit of that cobalt. And I really wanna get some, a little bit darker in the shadow there. And it's, because you can't see the reference photo, it's hard to to see, but I want to get that just a little more, a little darker in there. So I'm just going to go and kind of mix up now a little more of a kind of a mid-tone that has a little more of that red in it. Kind of blend that in a bit more. sort of takes a while to get it to the way you want it because there's so many um, just sort of different 
shades of that color that's a very kind of neutral color. So if you don't paint with it a lot, you know, it's kind of tricky to know. But I think that's looking a little better. I'm gonna go and let that sit for a bit and move on to the background. Now that the background is dry, when acrylic dries, it dries uh, quite a bit darker, you know, than you know than it, you think. So I'm gonna want to make a a little bit of a more neutral purple. So I'm just gonna add a bit of that. Um, if you take dioxazin violet and add some white to it and a little bit of like any yellow you'll get a nice sort of neutral i'm just gonna kind of put a few strokes of that in there so it's not so purple can use this cad yellow light even and it kind of it kind of grays it down a little keeping the kind of the brush strokes going a certain way so that looks a little you know that's a little more neutral and then I want to shape this a little bit here it got kind of too so you can go back and shape in some of these ruffles even if you didn't get them the way you wanted you can go and kind of cut in a bit same with up here I'm going to add a little um, a little bit of let's see some white and a little viridian and um, this here is something called emerald green, and I accidentally put that out. It's it's really so that's emerald. This is the viridian here. I'm not really a huge fan. I don't know why I bought it, but I guess I was doing something where I needed a bright, some sort of bright green. So <laughs> there you have it. So I'm just mixing in, I have a little viridian here and white and I added a tiny dab of the transparent um, brown, uh, sorry, red oxide. And I'm just putting a little bit of this green in the background here. You just sort of go with your gut, you know, if you However, you want to translate the reference photo, you can. Um, originally, I even thought I, it could be, you could really even just go, you know, really modern with it and just have the background be like, you could do it just white or just gray if you want to go real modern. Okay, and then I'm going to put some of this uh, Viridian and I'm going to warm it up a little with some that red transparent red oxide and there's some green right here in the foreground. And I'll get some kind of sprigs of that in front of the mushroom stem so it's not so Around there, 
and um, you want to just get you know, some of that, I'll use some of this sap green and a little bit of that cad yellow light. Just sort of get some, a little bit of lighter, some lighter greens in there. Same idea, just sort of dab that around a little. And again, um, I'm gonna go back and add a little more, a tiny bit of orange to this so it gets a little bit brighter. And I'm gonna go and layer a bit more of that lighter paint on there. And I'm getting, you know, a little more detailed there. So now that's getting a little more detailed and I still have a lot of mushroom to work on so I'm gonna go and first of all just finish up putting some interesting things in the foreground so I'll use some of this maybe some of this red oxide and put a few there's some kind of leaves and Just kind of add a little bit of that. That's just some of that transparent red oxide and some white. And I can add a little more white to it and put a few little notes of it up here. Just to, you know, mix it up a little so it's not all the same. So now I'm gonna get, um, let's see, I think I'm gonna add a little more light to the mushroom. It just keeps, that's one of the things uh, that's hard to do with paint with. Um, acrylic is it does lighten up a lot so, or darken up a lot so I'm going to go and redo that lighter layer on the mushroom which is just some cad red um, medium and some orange I'm just going to get that little kind of rim back in there Just add a few little dabs of that color in my painting as well. Just a few specks up there. Now I think I'll go and start adding the, the finer details to my mushroom. So all the little, these little white things here sort of Want to start adding those so i'm going to start off with some yellow ochre and some white and i'm just going to dab a few so it's kind of all around the edge you see them So I'm 
just gonna put some of those marks in there. Some of them are really tiny and then and then some of them are not so some of them are quite a bit bigger so you kind of want to just keep changing it up a little and then as you get to the top of it, like this one here, has a lot of them just kind of all together. So I'm just kind of working at these little details here. And you can even use your tiny brush to get a few real and you just want to keep going around and adding those little little marks. This is a really fun painting. And um, yeah, it's my first time painting uh, <laughs> something like this. So. so the main thing that we, we, you know, learned is you gotta you know, you can paint this in oil too, and it would be a lot easier to, to keep those different colors. Um, the acrylic, you just have to kind of go back a little. Uh, that's kind of what I learned, is you gotta go back and just sort of add more of that lighter paint until you get the, the right color, I'm sure. Over time, you just kind of get you know, get mastered at. I haven't been using my acrylic for a while, so. But I really, I have to say, I really like that you can just rinse your brush off in the water. So you just kind of, you know, we gotta just sort of go along and dab. And this is just a real inexpensive brush from Michaels. I think these are all the same. They, I think the Zen brush, they're like $5 or something and you can use your Michaels coupon and get them pretty cheap. Because I find no matter what you spend, if you spend a lot on a little brush or a little, they all end up, you know, curl, curling up and you can spend, you know, 40 bucks on it is still gonna curl up at the end of the day and I know some people know how to clean them properly and everything but I just don't have the time so I just use these little ones all right so now what I see I'm just gonna go with my I feel like I'm cheating when I use a brush this small it's so you can really get the exact So now what I see is I want to add a few, just a few lighter colors. Like even in the reference photo, you can see there's quite a few of these lighter um, leaves and stuff. So I'll go get a larger brush because that little brush is kind of, I'll keep it for doing details. So I'm going to get a, a little bit of that I always use some of that yellow ochre and the white and I'll just put a few, there's some little things kind of in the background 
that are mixed in. And they're just kind of all over the place, little shapes. So that just kind of ties it in a little to the, you know, to the ground. So they're not just so kind of glued in there. And then um, to the, in the far, far background, let me just see. I could cool this off even a little more. So I'm gonna show you, this is all dry. So let me just make sure you can see in the corner, I've got some of this uh, glazing liquid medium. So if I take this, let me just actually, I'll show you on this so you can see how transparent it gets. So if you use that, that liquid glaze with the cobalt blue, you can see how it's become kind of transparent now. So if I just kind of paint some of that over Whoopsies, I've got some orange in my paint brush. Okay, make sure your brush is clean. Don't do what I do. <laughs> and so now you can see I've got a blue. So if I go with that blue over everything, I'm not, it's not ruining my paint. It's just adding like a blue tint to that, that background layer. And it just kind of, it's gonna make a, kind of look more kind of off in the distance. The cooler something is, it looks further away. And in the foreground, you've got the, the warmer and some actual kind of, um, they're just a lot warmer, but you can warm them up in the foreground by using some of this liquid medium. And you can even use like a tiny bit of alizarin uh, crimson because it's transparent and you could just do a a glaze of that or this magenta maybe just kind of you don't have to have it everywhere but if you put that in there you can even add some of that red in the shadows um, with some of that glaze so the the beauty of acrylic is this ability to to glaze things and it just adds a lot of life to the painting at the end of it if you play around with some of the glazes so anyhow um, that's kind of it in a nutshell I haven't really ever painted these but I really think you know it's a cute painting and I think um, definitely my teenage daughter will like it and um, if you want to paint more like this, just sign up for my Patreon. Or if you want to paint this painting without any comments or anything going along, you can pay 99 cents a month on Instagram and subscribe there and then you can paint. And I've got quite a few uh, really cute lessons um, on my Instagram subscribers only content. So anyhow, um, I thank you for watching and I look forward to the next uh, video and yeah and look for my uh, I'll show you my um, new video coming out this week on making lots of thick paint you can see how thick the paint looks this is acrylic with um, the gel gloss medium so that's coming out this week so anyhow uh, thank you so much for joining and I'll look forward to seeing you again soon